Hi, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief look at how to calculate the probability of default based on a term structure for FRM candidates. This is from the assigned reading Anthony Saunders. And the idea is that if we have a term structure of interest rates, we can figure out what the implied marginal probability of default is on the risky bond. And so I made some numbers up here and these are segments of the yield curve, just the short end of the yield curve, and really specifically it's a term structure of theoretical spot rates because we really want spot rates on zero coupon bonds. But at one year right here, I just made up this green dot is the one year spot rate on a U.S. Treasury bill, and that's our riskless instrument. So that's right here, right here. And then slightly above that, I have the red dot, which represents the spot rate on a corporate bond of 4.8%. That's the risky asset. And now what we'd like to do is knowing those two spot rates, we'd like to infer the implied probability of default. And it, this goes back to an earlier screencast where I showed this equality here. And the idea is that as an investor, we ought to be indifferent to investing in the two instruments. On the left, we have the investment in the risky corporate bond, where 1 plus K, in this case, is 1 plus 4.8 percent, and that represents the contractually promised return. However, this is the risky bond. There is credit risk. And so we have some expectation that there may be a default. And so we should probability adjust this by multiplying by the probability of repayment. And so if we multiply the probability of repayment by the promised return, we're going to get the expected return. And as an investor, we should be indifferent between investing in that, the expected return on the risky asset, and just putting our money into the risk-free or riskless asset, the treasury. And its return is simply 1 plus I or 1 plus 4%. And I'll note something that Saunders does say in the footnotes. This is an equality that really holds up only if, as an investor, we have no risk aversion. So this is really a so-called risk neutral probability. If we are risk averse, then we're going to prefer the bird in the hand, so to speak, the sure thing, rather than the volatility created by this investment. But if we're not risk averse, these risk neutral probabilities should apply and we should be indifferent. And so you can see the whole idea here is that we're, if we can observe the term structure, that means we know the promised return on the corporate bond and we know the spot rate on the treasury, we can solve for the probability of payment, which is P. We just divide both sides by 1 plus K and then we just make it a 1 minus P in order to get the probability of default and we end up with this equation. So hopefully you see how this equation here becomes this equation here by dividing by 1 plus k and then we take 1 minus to both sides and we end up here with 1 minus p which is the probability of default remember we said p is the probability of repayment so 1 minus p is the probability of default it's now going to equal 1 minus this ratio here and so that's the key formula for FRM candidates to memorize that we can just take a ratio here and I'll show you how we can do that right here in the probability of repayment I just divided by I took 1 plus the Treasury and divided by 1 plus the corporate spot rate to get my probability of repayment is 99.4 percent my implied and if I wanted my probability of default I could do this full equation right here which is 1 minus the quantity 1 plus my treasury spot rate divided by 1 plus my corporate spot rate
and I get 0.76 is the implied probability of default and just note we got that because that's the probability of default that's implied that would make us as an investor assuming no risk aversion indifferent to investing at this higher risky 4.8 and just putting it into the safe 4%. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.